Hello everybody, my name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make Pong in Java using the library Swing and Ott, which are the built-in Java graphics libraries. This is meant to be sort of the hello world of game development. It's very simple. This will get you started in 2D game development from scratch and it's pretty cool. We don't have to worry about rendering or anything because of the graphics libraries we'll be using. So that'll make our lives as easy as possible. Now what I'm going to do over here um, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is set up the project and then create the window which we'll be doing uh, all of the game on. So first I'm going to open up the local disk C and then I've created a folder called dev and then Java projects. This is where I'm going to store all my Java projects. Um, you should do something similar. Uh, it'll make it easy if you want to push all your code to GitHub or anything like that, which is also where I'll be hosting this code so that you can download it and check it out yourself. Now the editor that I'm going to be using for this tutorial is IntelliJ. Um, it makes our lives very easy. It builds everything for you. It takes care of all that stuff and it'll just make this whole development process much easier. So I'm going to go up here. This is the community edition, by the way, and I'll leave the link in the description. I'm going to hit file, new project, and then I'm going to say Java project, hit next. And then I'm just going to leave all this blank. We're not creating it from a template. And then we're going to call this Pong. And so make sure that your directory is where you want to store your projects. So this is in dev Java projects Pong, which is where I want mine. And then I'm going to open this up in a new window and I'm going to move this out of the way. So now that we have the project created, we can hit open the directory for Pong. And then we have this source file and this is where we can put all of our source code. We'll right click on here and hit new Java class and we'll call this class main. So inside this main class, we'll have the standard Java main function, which is just basics of Java. And so inside this uh, method, we'll just say system.out.println hello world, make sure everything's running properly. And then hotkey to compile is shift F10. And so it should pop up a little terminal. And then we can hit shift F10 one more time. And we should be able to see here. Let's see. So if we hit build, build project. And if we hit run and we hit run main, there we go. And then we get hello world in the output down there. And let's see what that hotkey is. So hotkey is actually, yep, shift 10, shift F10. And so if we run that, we see that it reruns it. Okay. Now, one of the things you need to do in order to build a window and to use these Java graphics libraries, if you have to have a class that extends something called JFrame and implements another class called Runnable. This will take care of running the window on a separate thread and getting us all the methods that we're gonna need. So I'm gonna hit source again and create a new Java class. We will call this one uh, window since it's gonna be our window. And so we're gonna say that this class is going to extend JFrame and it's also going to implement Runnable. So now we can see here, we get an arrow and it says because it must implement the method, abstract method run. So we will create that method real quick. We'll say public void run, do that. And then it says, we don't know where JFrame is coming from. So it gives us this hint, which says Java X swing JFrame. So we'll import that real quick. There we go. And so we get no errors. And so then we'll go into main and what we'll do here is we'll say that window, window equals new window. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna have to start this window as a thread. So we'll say thread T1 equals new thread. And so we'll do that. And then what we can do is we can say T1.start. So the reason we have to do this is because um, in order to have a window, you need to have it running on its own separate thread. This will keep things nice if you want to uh, make the thread sleep, wait for a certain amount of time, anything like that. And so this uh, is just creating a new thread and then saying t1.start starts that thread. And so then it's actually going to enter this run method and we can start the game loop here. So we'll just say while true, um, just do whatever. So this will be used eventually for when we create that main loop and everything. For now, let's create a uh, default constructor right here. And so we'll just leave it blank for now. And so some of the things 
that we can do since we are extending JFrame is we can access natively these window properties. So we can say this dot, and then you'll notice it gives us a bunch of different uh, methods that it says that we have part of this class. And so these are methods we can call. So the default methods to construct the window, we say set size, and then we give it a width. We'll say 600 pixels, or we'll say 800 pixels by 600 pixels. And then we'll say this dot set title. This will set the title like up here. And so this, whatever we put in here is what will show up there. We'll say pong. And then we're gonna say this dot set resizable to false. So this just makes it so that the user can't resize it. We may change this in the future. Um, and then we'll say this dot set visible to true. So this just makes sure that the window is visible. And then we can say this dot set default close operation as jframe dot exit on close. Now, what this does is this just makes sure that when you click the X in the right hand corner of the window, that it will actually close it. And we can actually change this in the future if you wanted to. I would suggest just leaving it this because this is just the standard way to. Uh, the reason you might want to change it is if you wanted to save data or something or prompt the user and say, do you want to save anything? Um, so that might be why you would want to change the default close operation. Okay. And then we will also do a few other things after this, but this should be good enough. If we hit shift F10, it'll compile and run the program. And it's actually showing up on my other screen, but I'll bring it over here. And so you see it says Pong, and then we get a window that's 600 pixels by 800 pixels. And then we can minimize it. We can bring it back up. And then we can also hit X, and that closes it because of this thing. So this sets up our basic window. Um, when we do this, that sets it up. And then when we hit the T1.start, that is what actually starts running the window. So in the next video, what I wanna go over is starting some basic drawing and everything. Um, one other thing we might wanna do in this video is create a folder. So right here we have just random numbers and a random string. Now these are what you call magic numbers and we don't want any magic numbers because then we're gonna forget what they're for and why we even have them there. So we'll create a class, we'll call this constants. And then this will be a completely static class, which means we can exit from anywhere in the program. And so what we want to do is we want screen width and screen height. So we'll say public final, uh, we'll do a float. Uh, and then we'll call this screen width equals 800 pixels. And then we'll say public final, or we actually want to make these static to us. Like I know I'm forgetting something. Okay, so public static final float screen height equals 600.0 float pixels. Okay, and then we'll go into here and then we will, since these are all in the same package, we don't have to worry about anything. We can just go up here and then we can say constants dot screen width. And then we can go up here and say constants dot screen height. And it looks like the framework we're using actually does want these to be ints. So we'll keep these as integers. And then we'll just change this up here and change that. There we go. And so we have no issues. And then we'll make one more and we'll call this public static final string screen title equals Kong. And then we will change this to constants dot Kong. No, constants dot screen title. There we go. Okay, and you may be wondering why worry about all this, there's no point, but in the long run, you'll see that this will actually make your life a lot easier. If you ever have to start changing things, you can just go to constants, change stuff in here, and then you don't have to worry about looking for it all over in your code. Um, it's just a good practice, and you'll see when we end up having to use this. So that's about it that I have for this video. Next video, we will begin to implement like a little drawing routine and stuff, and uh, actually we'll, we'll do the game loop. So we'll get the game loop up and running, make sure that that's working properly and we'll use a variable time step and we'll see how that goes. Cool. All right. Thanks guys for watching. If you like this, leave a like and subscribe.